Good morning, good morning, people. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. I'm glad to be alive, I'm telling you. In the land of a living. Somebody had plans yesterday to be living. They made plans for today, but right now they're sleeping in their grave. I'm glad to be here. I tell you, somebody said we're living in perilous times, but I'm glad to be living in perilous times. The weather is changing. Some of our attitudes are changing. For the good, some for the worse. Thank you for tuning in. I want to talk about the truth. The truth hurts. And this message is not pouring the finger direct at nobody. It's just a general mes message. I'm speaking from a black perspective. That's what I'm speaking from. Good morning, everybody. So I don't want nobody to say, oh, he talking about this activist. He talking about that activist. No. This is not that type of party, trust me. I'm the type of person I can pick up the telephone and call you if I got a beef with you or problem with you. First, I can do that. So getting to the subject matter at hand. Now, it's several events that happened this past week. Well, within the last week, week and a half, we had a family yesterday that got, uh, two people got killed, actually three, a pregnant lady out here in Riverdale I mean, it's sad. I just want to say this to um, us, young ladies. Now, I could talk this way because I've been through the ringer, if I may say that. In other words, I have experience. I have adult daughters, and they are all beautiful. One preteen. But I want to say this. As a father, I'm speaking from a black perspective. This is just my opinion. It don't have to be your opinion. You don't have to agree with me. That's all I'm saying. When I see guys with dreads or locks, their pants hanging off their behind, I see trouble. When I see them with my daughter. I'm just telling the truth. I see trouble. I'm just telling y'all the truth now. You ain't got to agree with me. You can call me all types of names. But when I see your pants hanging off your behind and them long dreads, and all them tattoos up down your sleeve and all that, I see trouble. It's trouble. Trouble is brewing in the house. But it seems like that's what the younger people like. They don't want what you call a, just a plain, ordinary, lame, whatever. Now, I'm going to give you a secret, young ladies. Now, if you're thinking for the right now, you might want you a thug. But if you're thinking for the future and building things, businesses, having a house and having a family, you better get that lame. I'm just telling you. I'm telling you out of experience. When you get that nice looking guy, you know to sell drugs. He's very popular in the streets. He's a target. Everybody's afraid of him. He got money and he's selling weed and drugs. You better watch out. I'm telling you. Well, well, Dad, I'm just speaking it like I'm talking to my daughter. Well, Dad, he treat me nice. He buy me everything, and, you know, and I see him once a week. Listen, people, when you're in the street, all money is not good money. I'm telling you that. Some money you have to refuse when you're in the street, whether you're selling sex, whether you're selling drugs, because there's a trouble coming behind certain money. And I want to say this to the young ladies. I can't pick for you and your parents can't give you what you desire sexually long in a mate. It's a special love that we can give you that a boyfriend or husband uh, can give, uh, can't give you. And it's a love that they can give you that we can't give you. So the reason why I say I would give me a square guy or you would call him a lame because you know a square guy, he's going to be family oriented. He's going to come home. He's going to love you. He's going to treat you right, you and your children. Even if you have a ready-made family, he's going to love you. He's going to love your children as if it was his own. I'm telling you, young ladies, but when you go out here and get these thugs, man, you asking for it. They're going to drive your cars. I'm speaking from a black perspective. They're going to do drive-bys. They're going to do uh, robberies out of your cars. And you get back in there with your little daughter. And you know what happened? And they see him in that car. They're going to shoot that car. Or the police going to pull you over because it was involved in the crime. 
I got to tell the truth and shame the devil. And I'm not against love. I want everybody to be in love and be happy. I believe in family. A strong family, a strong race. I believe in that. I believe in unity, in partnership, in relationship, in business. I believe in that. But ladies, I'm telling you, I know it's a few, only a few black men, selected black men that you can pick. But when you find that one, you better hold on to him and treat him right. And he better hold on to you and treat you right. Now, I'm listen, ladies. I don't want to look like I'm coming down hard on the ladies and nothing like that. But the men is not sure stopping you. Some men just don't care. They're only using you, a lot of them, for a place to stay. To live in your house, to play your son's video game, and to drive your car and walk around like they're a man with manhood. Manhood is not how many people you can beat up. Manhood is not how many people that are intimidated of you. Manhood is not uh, telling people off. That's not manhood. Manhood is going out there, taking care of your children, doing the best you can, fighting for what's right for your family. That's manhood. Loving your spouse, loving your wife, loving your girlfriend. Treating her right, communicating with her, not putting your hands on her. That's manhood. See, we got this thing twisted up. As manhood, carrying a gun, everybody afraid of you. And I always tell young men, just as much as you ready to kill, you better be ready to die. And I always say, whoever pull the trigger first, that's the baddest man that day. They got it in his hand. A lot of wars have been fought out here. Men against men, armies against armies. And people have died with a weapon inside their pants, on their side, in their hand. People, I'm speaking from a black perspective. Young men, you know you mean that young lady no good, but you come in her life and destroy everything about her. You introduce her to drugs and pills and alcohol and weed. Now, I don't believe every influence is bad influence. So you have negative influence and you have positive influence some of y'all out here you turning your girl out on drugs and pills and alcohol and weed so she can buy it because she got the most money and vice versa you know you depressed using these drugs listen people domestic violence is finna rise up right now we, we, we're in a pan i call it a pandemic right now so a lot of things are been finna be shut down so we have to be in each other's faces for extended period of time which sometimes is not good so my point is we have to be careful arguing with each other i'm talking about boyfriend and girlfriend husband and wife that's what i'm talking about heterosexual i'm speaking on straight people that's what i'm speaking on because I'm qualified to talk about that because I've been there, did that, and done that. I'm qualified. So I'm saying, let us try to get along with each other. And some of these drugs that we're taking, and y'all know that I'm, not, I'm against drugs. I'm sorry, but I got to tell the truth. Drugs have not done none of us no good. All these chemicals on this loud weed that they're, they're selling. You got the pills that they're selling. You got the alcohol, which is chemically induced. All these chemicals and your plus your medication that you taking, your high blood pressure pills you taking, your, your blood thinners you taking, your, your diabetes medicine that you taking, your heart medicine that you taking, your cholesterol medicine that you're taking. It's not mixing. It's not working with all these different types of medication. People, we got a problem. And sometime with our culture, and I'm speaking from a black perspective now. I'm black. I love being black. We hate to be told the truth. Now, if I was a white man, all the points that I made, some of you are not going to accept it because I'm a black man. 
Now, if a white man was telling you the same thing that I'm telling you, you have a tendency to accept what he tell you. Maybe because of your condition. Here's a man that's speaking truth to us, have lived practically basically everything that he talked about, with the exception of doing drugs. But I know the effect of drugs. So some of us, we wait on white folks to validate what we tell each other. We have to stop it. People, our emotions are getting high right now. And I'm not talking about weed, I'm talking about just high. And a lot of us, we have two or three girlfriends. We're cheating on the side, got a husband and all that. That's not cool. That's not cool. People are breaking. People are depressed. They are using drugs, illicit sex, for a way to escape their reality. People, people are hurting. They've lost their loved ones this year to COVID. They lost their loved ones in uh, gun violence. People are hurting. They're depressed. And they don't know how to handle their situation. Their, their sickness is in their bodies. People, I got to tell the truth and shame the devil. It's my life all together. I said no. There's some things that I'm working on in my life to better my situation and my condition and my relationship with my people. So don't think, because I'm on here talking like this, that my life is 100. It's not 100 at all. I got some improvement to do, to make. Time changes, but God remains the same. And when time changes, just like when you call yourself falling in love, you in love, now all of a sudden you decide that you're not in love no more. So time, things do change, people do change. How about arising in love instead of falling in love? People, I thank y'all so much. I could say more and more and more about this situation, but I just want to say, young ladies, be careful who you entertain. Be careful, young ladies. When you see a young man just full of locks and dreads, his pants hanging down, tats all up on his arm, most of the time, not all the time, that's trouble brewing, stirring up. I got to tell the truth and shame the devil. Well, I think he's cute. I think he's handsome. He got a body. He do this. Yes. But are you trying to build a future? Now, it's like two couples getting married. They spend... Twenty and thirty thousand dollars on a wedding. They do more planning together for a wedding than planning to stay together for a lifetime. I'm gonna leave that with y'all. Have a wonderful day. Have a magnificent day. Peace out. Thank you so much.